Hey everybody, this is Joe, and I'm in my Houston, Texas garden. I'm here in zone 9A, and uh, this is the end of December, and we just had our very first freeze of the year. Uh, we're very spoiled here in Houston. My garden has been beautiful for 10 months, um, but winter always catches up with us, or almost always. Every once in a while, we'll get a year with no freeze, but that has, hasn't happened for a while now. Um, while everyone else in the country was in the grips of a horrible, horrible storm, uh, we had our own uh, little version of that um, with uh, about four days of freezing temperatures and a couple of those days down into the te you know mid-teens. So I really didn't cover, this is a perennial garden, and I really didn't cover um, anything with big frost cloths or blankets or anything. I covered a lot of things with leaves. These are just dry leaves that were collected in my giant leaf pile. If you've watched my videos before, you might have seen my giant leaf pile. And so all the things that you can see that are really nice, um, still I covered I just covered little things and some things still got burned but other you know parts of the same plant still look good the big things I made no attempt to cover um, so I've got a back in the back a fire spike very hardy always um, returns in the spring a Amistad salvia, also very hardy here. Now this is hardy for zone nine, um, but I've never had a problem with them. The same with the Cape Plumbago. There are some more salvias in here um, that have done really well. Everything else, now I will leave all of this standing um, until probably about the 1st of February. I'm trying to create some, um, it'll protect the crowns of the plants, um, protect the roots, and also gives wildlife some cover. Um, and so uh, it's gonna look pretty sad for quite a while. But they're, like I said, little things um, that are still green that I was able to protect. And um, these are um, daylilies that I, I'm surprised how green they are. This is my one flowering thing that's still in the ground. Uh, this is a zinnia. I had a giant box that was an insulated box and uh, I chucked it over there and it pulled it up a week later. It still looks great. Um, my sad little iris. It was trying so hard to bloom for me and got hit before, uh, before it could. Again, I just took about maybe five really giant plastic um, pots and covered just a few things. I covered the parsley. I covered the the uh, fennel just to kind of see what would happen. I haven't grown it in the winter and you can see there's still a lot of green that's nice and firm and looks good even though the tops um, have sort of wilted down. There's a little piece that looks pretty good but I did cover this with plastic as well as uh, surround the bottom with leaves. The things that I will trim down right now um, in the coming days are bulbs they just turn too much. So this is an elephant ear that has just turned uh, and it's a hot mess. And um, this has gotten hit even harder than this. Um, you can see I've got some trunks here that look pretty good. They look pretty firm. Um, but there have been years where I have cut this flush with the ground and eventually it all um, uh, rebounds. So that has been very hardy for me as well. I've got a uh, salvia black and blue, unkillable. Um, and because this is a perennial garden, most of it, I would say, dies to the ground um, and doesn't have beautiful winter interest. But a few things do. Mostly, you know, all my roses are fine, but it's these grasses here and there and there, and there's a little grass back in there that really provide some pretty um, winter foliage. Um, and this, I think this is a papyrus. I think it's going to survive. I don't remember whether I had it in the last giant freeze, um, but it definitely has an interesting shape 
um, left over. Um, and then we brought pots into the garage or um, even more delicate things into the into the house. Oh, there's Miss Doubtfire. Hello, pumpkin. Oh, there she goes. Um, and things like pansies and uh, violas. They're a little worse for wear, but they did all right just with a light covering. Delphiniums did well. Um, and more daylilies there. And uh, another thing that did well with just a light covering of just leaves um, were the coneflowers over here as well. This is so pretty. I just love it. It just, um, it's beautiful all year. And um, I'm really happy that that's front and center when I come out in the back door. That's what I'm going to see is this beautiful thing and then that beautiful thing behind it. All these pots were fine. Um, most of these were, excuse me, inside. They did really well, except that I have an inside kitty named Muffins who decided he wanted to walk across this every day. And he knocked all of these little leaves off, that rascal. But that succulent leaf, I will just take I have sort of a little succulent nursery over here of baby plants. And I'll just take that and lay it flat and it will eventually grow. Let me see if I can show you. It will eventually grow some little roots like that and then grow into a little plant. I've got a couple more that I have just broken off. I need to let put in here as well. This plant right here is exactly the same leaf. So it's got a little fatter leaf and not quite as gray as these. And that's probably been six months of just sitting there being ignored um, and, it, and it's finally putting, uh, putting some roots out, putting some leaves out. So even when things get knocked off by a cute fluffy kitten, uh, you can still get a plant uh, back out of it. The delphiniums um, did really well just cover it and I just sort of pulled some things back. The surprise thing for me was this agastache. I did not cover that. I have leaves at the bottom and I did not cover the top of that and it just stayed green. I did not think it would do that. The lance leaf coreopsis um, survived fine. I did put one giant plastic pot over this. I was trying to rescue the, the little flowers. There were so many buds that even these buds survived and a little bit of uh, milkweed flower survived. But this just melted, that's a huge lily. And a couple of years ago, it took me an hour just to get this lily trimmed back. But I will cut the lily back. These are amaryllis here and there. Um, and those will all go to the ground and look great again. A few other things, I just thought I'd Look around, Texas blue bonnet seeds were fine um, and with or without leaves. And I was surprised with this, with just a little covering, um, this little, um, what's that called, sedum. And again, I was surprised by how well the daylilies, you know, some of them look a bit burnt, but so much of it is still green. I was really surprised by that. And these are um, foxgloves, and they did great. They probably got about six or seven inches of, of leaves on top of them, but they really did did great. Um, when I uncovered them, I was really pleased with how nice they look. And this is agapanthus, which got hit pretty hard, but then still has some leaves that, you know, just were fine, completely uncovered. Things are popping out. This is a, a Texas uh, wildflower. I'm sure it's native to tons of, of uh, the United States little wine cup. It does well in the winter. There's one there and one there. It does well well, well in the winter and in the spring. Um, it'll be great. And then it kind of limps along. Um, gosh, this foxtail fern, it should come back from that. Um, but it, it looks kind of terrible. I suppose we could call that winter interest, but you know, that's a stretch. Uh, again, the difference between a daylily 
and this is a crinum lily. You know, this just melted. Day lilies seem fine. Now, I did kick. These are all leaves that were on top of that, so they had some protection. The scabiosa, I buried pretty deeply, probably a foot deep, because I really wanted it to be protected, and it's still got flowers. I mean, that was under, it was covered up for a week, solid, and it's still got buds on it, so I'm really pleased. Um, I knew that was going to do well all winter, and so I protected it, but I didn't cover it with a frost cloth or anything. Little things like um, ammy, and um, I think that's fennel, and uh, the, um, oh, I've forgotten the name of that. Anyway, that did well, uh, with just a light covering. It'll come back to me what that is. And then it was super fun. One of the things that did great, I buried it deeply. This is that um, Gulf Coast Pensamen. And <laughs> it just looks fantastic. And one of them has little buds on it. Um, looks great. Little carrots did well. This is a that big, tall penta. And this is another one. And I buried them. They are not really hardy. They'll do a light frost fine, but they are really not a perennial um, in 9A. Sometimes they are with a light, light frost, but not at 16 degrees. So I covered this. You can see all of these leaves were just on those two plants. And I probably, it's probably 18 inches high. And I did cover that with a frost cloth. And the same thing here, probably 18 inches of leaves tucked down in and all around the base and um, frost cloth and over that. These are the only two things in the yard that I covered with frost cloth. Um, and it, I just want them to survive. Um, obviously they look terrible, but I just wanted the roots to survive. Um, one of the things that just didn't even blink was the uh, monarda over there. Just, you know, I didn't cover it. It looks fine. I've got all this salvia leucanth that looks a little bit gray, a little bit of purple left on it. So, you know, it gives a little structure um, to the garden, you know, looking at it from the house. A little little hints of purple. Um, and, and that's a very hardy, uh, very hardy plant here. Um, and I end up cutting chunks out and giving it away um, a lot of the year. So this is stuff that was all in the garage. And I'm so thrilled. Look how fabulous this ivy geranium has just <laughs> really um, just looks so good. It hadn't looked this good, you know, in three months. So I'm very excited about how pretty those ended up. The olive tree seemed to do fine. I did cover it. I pushed it up against the house. I put sort of my big trash bins around it to keep stuff, the wind off of it quite so much. Um, and it seems to be okay, I think. It's a little, it seems a little worse for wear, but I think it's all right. And my poor ginger, gosh, that's a mess. And my poor wisteria, which looks green, but it's, those leaves are dead. And I'm not sure I know enough about wisteria to know if I'll have to cut all that down to the ground or if it will leaf out from these, um, from the stems <clears throat> that are on there. I don't know if it'll leaf off of that, but I hope so. Here's a little uh, pipe vine that I forgot to get this, this pot stayed out here accidentally. And a lot of it died off, but you know, uh, completely unprotected. That did fine. I protected these with just a little covering. Um, this is a different pipe vine. And then this one seems fine. It's a little crusty, but it seems completely fine. And th this is my first winter with those. I'm really pleased all these walking iris. You know, a, a little bit of it is burnt, but for the most part, I think it still looks pretty great. Oak leaf hydrangea still looks great. This is just the root stock. I had a Meyer lemon here uh, years ago. It died. Uh, this is just the root stock of, I think it's probably a sour orange tree. It won't fruit for us, but um, it has terrible prickles on it. 
so I don't really love having it in the garden, but um, there are butterfly uh, caterpillars who will eat um, citrus. And so um, that's why we leave it out here. And we'll go through, you know, in a couple of months in, in February and, um, and trim all the brown out. Um, there she is, Miss Doubtfire. Hello, pumpkin. Now I've already seen a skipper butterfly and a monarch um, butterfly and a couple of bees out here. Um, and so I'm glad I have a few little flowers that I still had in the, you know, rescued in the garage. And, um, and this looks so ratty, but I'm going to leave it. Um, you know, my temptation is to cut it back, but there's a lot of flowers. So I want to leave everything I can for the bees because it's pretty sparse out here. And then I'll show you one other thing. And I'm trying to add native Texas plants and evergreen plants. I really am trying to think about uh, not just the spring, but to have some evergreen things. So this is Walter's Viburnum, has white, little white flowers. Uh, and this is a native tree and it's evergreen. And so it, there's, I put three of them in here and it's doing really well. And it looks pretty, even when everything else, when I trim it all down, this will still be green and still be pretty. Well, I hope you guys, oh, Delphinium. I knew I'd remember the name of that. Uh, I hope you guys have a, uh, a great week and I hope that your garden has survived and has enough things to look at until spring comes again. Take care. Bye-bye.